Hello and welcome to another let's play. Me, yeah, move six of Echo. Before we start, if you're interested in getting this game, you can get it for free on itch.io. But if you want to support people that made this game and are making other games and you want to get them earlier, you can go to their Patreon, which they does a month. So, on the last let's play, we continued walking through the night with Jenna, where we uh, talked about her grandmother, who was a ham radio operator, and also, you know, a bit traditional, and she had a big amount of friends, because she, uh, on going on ham radio, had a lot of bike, not biker, uh, trucker friends, and, you know, just small stuff like that. And also, we... I looked it up because I was like, I think I remember something like this. Locked ourselves in the good route. Hyena. It's nice. I like having a good route. But now Duke was like, hey, uh, you need to come look at my Twitch. I mean, sorry. I uh, need to come over to my house because what are you guys doing out there? So we're uh, talking to him. So I'm going to set my face. And begin. The lanky weasel. Lanky Weasel is certainly looking rough around the edges than I remember. The old man taking slow steps into his overgrown front yard. Of course, he's got a gun on him. His paws gingerly clutch it, while the other brandishes a cigarette. Or at least, I think it's a cigarette. Real late for a stroll. He mumbles. Duke? Hi, good morning. It's Jenna. Is that Chase with you? I hold up my paw and wave. Hi. Hmm, it is. Duke takes a drag from his fat cigarette, and I see some embers fling about as he taps the end. In my mind, I imagine one of those little specks of fire catching on the untrimmed grass beneath, setting everything ablaze. I knew it. Leo's been, what Leo's been saying is true. He was seeing shit as well. Confronted him about it, and he got a wild look in his eyes, pushed me to the dirt. But here you are, in the flesh, and talking this time. I gave him a befuddled look. What the hell's he talking about? Well, Leo's going through a bit of a rough time, and that's certainly no excuse for the violence he imposed against you. However, we did see Carl see you at Carl's house, and might have heard that he's gone missing. Hmm, what good timing for your arrival then, Jasmine. It's Jenna now, but that's besides the point. His bloodshot eyes shift from me to her, and that makes me even more uneasy. Have you seen Carl since last night? Duke clicks his tongue, shaking his head more times than he really needs to. I don't think you're investigating the right mystery here. Jenna raises an eyebrow. He points to a swollen pink... Uh, he points a swollen pink finger in my direction, still looking at Jenna. The real question is, why has your friend here been snooping around our houses here for the past month? What? Jenna furrows her brow. A light sigh escaping from between her lips. I don't know what... I feel her hand discreetly reach over and squeeze my side. Hold on, Chase. She mutters, unfocusing her attention back... Wait, refocusing her attention back on the weasel. Duke. Please, focus on me for a moment. Listen to the words I'm saying. Have you seen Carl since last night? Duke hangs his maw open, rolling his jaw around from side to side, until there's an audible click as it locks into place. I don't think you're hearing me. I heard you, Duke. Please, yes or no answer, and then we can discuss we, what you saw with Chase here. Duke's bloodshot gaze flicks back to me, and then there's something expectant about the look in his eyes. Like, he's waiting for me to say something re revelat revelatory. 
Such fancy words. I have no clue what he's talking about, though. And Shannon doesn't seem to want to give him an inch of leeway to change the topic of conversation. Hmm. I see his teeth grit past his thin lips. Despite the intensity he's putting off, he looks kind of distracted, like we're only getting about three-fourths of his attention. Maybe it wasn't... No, wait. Maybe it wasn't quiet to you, though, was it? His voice is strained and quiet. The weasel scratches his inner thigh. I didn't see the ram boy, or his little rich parents. Okay, thank you. Chase? Oh, uh, I only got here Saturday. I wasn't here before then. There's only really one other honor in town, as far as I know, and he probably weighs 150 pounds more than me. So, I don't really know who else it could be. Duke just glares in response to that, and I can't help but drift my gaze to the gun he's holding so idly in his grasp. I think he notices, and I see his fingers clench around the base with a little tighter. Okay, thank you, Duke. It's really good to see you again. If you have the time, keep an eye out for him, okay? We can't seem to track him down. He's right there. He points to me. Uh, no, I'm referring to Carl. Carl's not here. Right, we're going to go look around some more and knock on a few doors once the sun's up. You take care, all right? Before I can so much as raise my paw in farewell, Jen has already turned about and making her way down the street. Again, I have to hustle to catch up. Another half an hour or so of searching, and we end up back at Carl's place. After the whole interview with Duke, she starts ranting a little about meth, you, meth use and the psychological effects. Admittedly, I was only picking up bits and pieces of what she was saying. Apparently, the drug stimulates parts of the brain that create urges for tinkering. Which is why yards with of meth houses often look like scrapyards after extended use. <clears throat> Poor Duke. I thought the guy always kind of skeeved me out, even back when we were kids. I think he used to have a wife at some point, who I remember being really nice. She used to ride her bike around town the whole, all the time, and one day she stopped by to help me set up a root beer float stand. Then, one day she just kind of disappeared. Hell, I think I was playing at Leo's house when the cops came to the door and asked if Leo's parents had seen her. Jenna uses her newly acquired spare house key and lets us in. I spent so much time at Carl's house growing up that stepping inside always kind of felt like coming home. Carl's parents were never as friendly as Leo's or TJ's, but they were often just straight up absent, which means we got the run of the place. I glance off to the side and notice a divot in the wood paneling next to the door. Carl slammed his head there when we were roughhousing six or seven years ago. It was a wonder we didn't do more damage. Jenna nudges me with her shoulder as I shift my attention back to her. Hey, I'm going to put something on in the living room. I've been mainly cramped up there on the couch with my laptop while you guys are out earlier, trying to get some studying done. Despite the quiet, it's a little difficult to focus with all that's going on. I do find it weird that she is in just the living room. Um, I don't know. If there's this big empty house, something a little spooky... Maybe something a little spooky from her past. And, you know, the spooky picture as well. And stuff. I probably would pick a nice, comfortable room and lock the door. So, you want to watch some TV? Well, sure. I've just got something in mind. She smiles at me, turning tail to head down the hall. I follow suit, 
briefly considering raiding the cupboards for snacks, but that kind of feels out of line considering the circumstances. Flynn had turned the air conditioning off last night, so we got the ceiling fan going overhead. Oh, is Flynn still being here? Not sure where he is. He's doing a pretty good job of keeping me cool. The blades spinning so fast, they almost look still. When I was a kid, I was always kind of afraid of having the fan on the high setting. The thing would start to wobble and click, and I thought that any moment it'd spin off its socket and come careening right towards me. Yeah, sorry, it's late. Long day. Reading. Uh, let me just check my face. Okay, the end time. Okay, cool. Oops, sorry. This one Carl has looks extremely sturdy, though. It kind of looks like it's made out of some sort of brushed copper with a turquoise painted metal base. It's at this point I realize I'm not doing a good job of focusing on the anime Jenna's put on. I glance over to her to see if she's noticed my wandering gaze, but I see that her, gate, that her eyes are closed. At first I think she's asleep, though they begin to flutter open after some time. She rolls her head some in my direction, can't my gawking. Hmm? She smiles lightly, stretching her arms out over her head and letting out a long yawn. What? I put on my best innocent face. Just like checking to see if you were as riveted by the ongoing developments of Mr. Wong's fledgling dim sung business. An amused noise escapes between her lips, her left ear twitching some as she stares at the screen with half lidded eyes. Have symmetrical demon girls shown up yet? The magical demon what? I thought this was a nice little, what do they call it, slice of life thing? Well, I suppose that's how they get you. Is this kind of like, um, demon lord in another world gets a part-time job or something? Oh yeah, that's another anime that I looked at a little bit and then fell off. Because I'm always like, I'm going to get a little bit of this anime so I can see if I want it or not. You know, when I do travel work or something. Breathe deep. Dear Denji. She hums her words, her tone sleepy and warm. They lull you into something calm, low pressure, giving you a chance to really live in the setting before they pull out the rug from un from beneath you. That's one thing I don't like about some animes, where they are like 110% at once. Like, Attack on Titan. Really good anime. Because it's like, hey, these guys live in this little thing, it's medieval-y, and then all of a sudden, Titan's attack, and it's terrible. It's kind of like, they have a general sense of the world. I saw an anime recently, like, first episode, where it's like, here are these people living in this magical town. Oh no, it j here's these robots attacking, and there's these giant robot that was in underneath the city the whole time. And then there's this dude that shows up and ex absolutely wrecks the giant um, uh, robot for funsies. And then the main character is like, well, I hate this guy because he might have got the robots doing all the destroying. So I need to have him fight other people. And it's like, okay. This plot was just kind of went to 11 immediately. Kind of blew its load. I don't want to blow your load that early. Anyways. Yeah. Jenna's tone is infectious. And I even start to speak with a sort of rumbling. Only half serious whine. Eh, do they all have to be like that? I mean, what if I just want a quiet, slow burn kind of show? It seems like all of them these days just have fantastical bullshit. That comes out of nowhere. On screen, the character of Mr. Wong, a rotund red panda, is cooking a batch of fried rice in a large wok. It's also lovingly animated for something so mundane. 
You can practically see each individual piece of egg, pepper, and seasoning he sprinkles on top. Chase, there are plenty of slow burning shows out there. And how would you even know? You told me you don't keep up with this stuff anymore. I mean, I'll occasionally put on some anime put some anime on when I'm bored back in Pueblo. Oh yeah? Yeah, well, I guess hanging out with you has made me kind of interested again. Jenna smiles again, and I can see the little tips of her tiny fangs. She shifts in her seat, scooting from her side of the sofa to mine. Her arms wrap around my torso, squeeze me some. Without really thinking, I rest my head against hers, and exhale for what seems like ages. I can feel butterflies in my stomach, somewhere deep down, the light prickle of goosebumps along my neck. It's so intimate, so beyond the boundaries of closeness that Jen and I have shared in the past. But it's comfortable, no judgment or pressure. Just two people on the same, way, same wavelength, both very tired, stressed out, and kind of slap happy. What does that mean, anyways? I watch her chest rise and fall against mine, her fur so much softer than mine. It's like running your paws through goose down. Now, are we talking about, like, goose people, or... Feral geese's goose downs, just saying. Because there's like a swan or kind of egret or whatever person in this world. I slide my fingers around her shoulder and down her arm, then back up again. Is this just platonic? Like one of those cuddly girl slumber party kind of things? You know those things are actually just orgies. I know, they talked about it on the news. We never did anything like this when we were younger, though. The closest thing I can I can think of, the closest thing I can think of is when we shared an air mattress when we went camping for my 16th birthday. Leo, having been out of town at the time, of course. You're very cute, Chase. Your words taken by surprise, a compliment so blatant, and not something I've been told in years. Oops, let me just switch over here. It feels like minutes pass before I feel her weight shift beside me. She looks up at me, and I look back down at her. Are we gonna get some tail? Or at least a smooch. Next thing I knew, her mouth is pressed against mine. Nice. My heart skips in my chest and there's definitely some tightness in my shorts. Her muscle is small, and my tongue easily fits. It in feels its inside once she opens her lips. We continue for some time, the noise from the TV seeming to fade in the background. In an unimportant mumbling drowned out by her pounding heartbeats, there's a whirl of the spinning fan above. It isn't until the episode ends that we're left in actual silence that Jenna seems to pause. She pulls back, eyes on my chest, and her expression indescribable in the new darkness. Hmm. I'm a little bit concerned about moving forward with this. I've seen how these sorts of things can destroy friendships, and the one I have with you, I truly value. I'm worried we will look at ourselves in the morning. Well, end of a couple of hours be disappointed with ourselves wait I stopped for a second frowning art are you saying you don't want to you know at least in part because you think I'm gonna be bad at it Jenna doesn't immediately respond oh no I've done it plenty of times my voice comes out a little louder than expected, and Jenna pushes her paw to her mouth, hushing me. I pull her away, repeating myself, but this time more quietly. I'm not... I'm not bad at sex. I can feel my cheeks burning at this point, Jenna's increasingly amused expression not helping at all. 
Chase. Oh my god. Jenna's shoulders shake as she titters, I don't know what that means. Clearly tickled by how f flustered I'm getting. I'm serious. I can see that. That's not exactly what I was getting at, but I am well aware you and Leo snuck off every chance you could when you were younger. But you may possibly know there were several slight differences in anatomy between Leo and I. I continue to frown at her as hard as I can. Okay, don't give me that look. Now, I actually feel bad. I grind quietly. Well, how many guys have you been with? Okay, so here's the thing. I thought she was meaning, like, ruining friendships. Was she meaning, like, she's going to be disappointed it because he only did guys? He got to ask me earlier at the diner, so it's only fair, right? After the first year of college, I pretty much lost complete contact with Jenna's social circle. Initially, it was because Carl never really wanted to go out, so he mainly just hung out in our dorm. But by the time Carl dropped out, it was like all our social links had been severed. I'd look at the pictures she'd post on her timeline and I wouldn't recognize anybody she was friends with. It was such a contrast, seeing her with all these, at all these fancy events, wearing formal dresses, and receiving awards. For a while, I thought she'd just changed, transformed by college life and the intellectual peers she surrounded herself with. Okay, you're asked a question, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm gonna go into this diatribe. But talking to her again this week, I've come to realize that's not the case at all. She was always that person. It was just everyone else that brought her down to our level, I guess. Been with? She leans back some, perking an eyebrow and putting on a professional visage, though she still got a mirth-laden look in her eyes. Are you asking about dating or sex? Um... Both, I guess? Oh, well about the same. Six or seven. Ooh, that's more than I did. Well, yeah. Six and a half? Let's just say six. Uh, what happened with number seven? She lets out an amused noise, then seems to think for a moment as she strokes her chin. Oh, it was nothing too serious. Just this guy who worked out at the gym I went to. I believed he was a draft horse. Oh! Or is she meaning he was so big she, she couldn't take him? My mouth goes a little dry. A draft horse? Hmm. Also, she isn't big. She smiles lightly. He was really sweet, and the muscles were nice. Usually, I don't like being picked up, but it was definitely interesting, with him barely being nearly seven feet tall. I stare blankly at her, eyes wide. She continues to smile at me, through the corner of her mouth twitches, and she brings her paw up to cover her muzzle. Chase, I'm messing with you. Jenna! I scowl. Wait, is that... No, wait, is that really your type? I thought you would be more into, like, twiggy anime boys. I have... No, wait, I'll have you know, my manga and anime interests don't control my love life. I like people primarily based off their personality. Oh, I'm fucked then? Jenna chuckles at that. She reaches out and takes her paw, giving it a firm squeeze before patting my cheek. Though it feels nice. I'm still not sure how to take all of this. I'm sorry for messing with you. Her voice is clear and soft as she punctuates the end of the sentence with a kiss on the tip of my nose. I'm immediately a little nervous myself. Crossing new thresholds like this can be a little nerve-wracking. But make no mistake, I want to do this. I let that settle for a moment before reaching up taking hold of each of her wrists. Wait, are you serious? She nods happily. 
If you're okay with it, of course. Really? You and me? She nods again. Hmm. Like... Boyfriend and girlfriend? Boyfriend and girlfriend. I thought... The thought enters my head just before I speak it. And I have just enough time to close my mouth before it's uttered. She looks at me curiously. Just shut up and say yes. Yeah. I'm down with this. Yeah. You are not fucking in my house! Or is that what an orgasm's like in Echo? Well! I guess it is kind of a day and I'm like, I'm not sure if you bang Leo in the- I think you do, actually. But that's an interesting way of doing stuff. And goyles. Wouldn't mind banging Jenna, she's- I mean, I'm a furry, I think she's hot, give me a break. But that's gonna be the end of this Let's Play. Oh, woof. So, please comment, cause I like comments, tell me you like, dislike, tips, because otherwise, if you like my YouTube and like to grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos that grow. And please remember to pay new animals, help control the pet population. And if you want to play this game, it's available for free on itch.io. But if you want to support the people that made this game, and are making other games, you can go to their Patreon, where it's $3 a month. And until next time, on another Let's Play, me, Gamble, Six of Echo. I need to leave before this music starts getting real serious. So thanks and see ya.